Ty Lee hid a secret from all of us that might just change the way fans of Avatar The Last Airbender feel about the series forever. Despite what the showrunners might have wanted you to think, it looks like Aang wasn't the last airbender after all. The spry and bubbly Tai Lee always showed signs of being more than just a physically gifted person, and the deeper you go into the details of the theory, the more evidence you'll find that supports such a claim. Because it turns out, not only did Tai Lee have a strong connection to the Air Nation, but she was also an airbender hiding in plain sight the entire time, right in front of our faces. Tai Lee used her gravity-defying athletics and combat prowess to fight alongside the evil Princess Azula, and gave Team Avatar a run for their money on multiple occasions. And that's actually because she has a lot more in common with Aang than originally thought. The idea that Tai Lee was an airbender has been a long-standing theory amongst the Avatar community ever since the show first introduced her character. And though there wasn't a lot of evidence to support the theory at first, that quickly changed. Going off of just her character design, Design, people speculated that Tai Lee looked a lot more like a member of the Air Nation based on her similar facial features to Aang, and even created fan art and memes to prove their point. Not to mention that she was one of the few characters in the show that supposedly couldn't bend, yet somehow was able to fly through the air and fight off professional occasions in every episode that she appeared in. Yeah, she might have superior chi skills, but it actually makes more sense that she used some of her airbending as well, especially when you look at how she glides through the air and throws blows to her opponent. And not only that, but another quality that belonged to the members of the Air Nation was the ability to read people's emotions. Air nomads were shown to be more spiritually connected to the world around them than the other nations were. And one thing that Tylee did very well was read how other people were feeling around her, even Azula, despite Azula rarely ever showing emotion on her face. Another interesting thing to point out is how the titular theme of the entire show is based around the idea that Aang was not only the Avatar, but is also the last airbender left in the world. In fact, various source materials outside of the original TV show hinted that Aang wasn't the last of his people. The book Avatar The Last Airbender Legacy showed its readers that most of the members of the Air Nation were nomads, which are people that travel from place to place with no permanent home. This tells us that the Air Nomads never stayed in one place for too long and used to be found traveling all around the world. In fact, it's mentioned in Avatar The Last Airbender Legacy that they traveled so much that, according to the book, these nomads had their own flag that allowed other air nomads to recognize them as a member of their tribe. And because they were a nation that was known for traveling, it makes the story that Aang learned in the show much less plausible. While Aang learned that the Fire Nation attacked all of the air temples and wiped out every airbender aside from him, it's much more likely that most of the air nomads would have been wandering around the other nations of the world during the attack attack, which would have meant that many airbenders ended up surviving after all. Another piece of evidence actually proved that the Fire Nation failed to eradicate all the air nomads in a short comic. According to the graphic novel, Avatar The Last Airbender The Lost Adventures, Aang discovered that the Fire Nation had been actively hunting airbenders that had escaped the attack during the century that he was frozen in the iceberg. The Lost Adventures was an anthology series in the form of a graphic novel that was compiled of short stories written between 2005 and 2011. In one of them titled Relics, which took place after the attack on the air temples, the Fire Nation had actually devised a trap where they would trick these air nomads that weren't in the temple during the raid to come back up to the temple to be ambushed, meaning that the Firebenders knew that the Avatar wasn't the last airbender. Aang discovered this Fire Nation tactic when he and the gang were wandering around the Earth colonies. Aang came across a man selling goods in one of the towns and discovered that the man was selling a pendant that came from the Air Nation. The seller told Aang that he could find the person who gave him the pendant on top of the tallest mountain in the area. Aang then snuck away from his team and discovered a shrine that was covered in Air Nation symbols. But after making his way into the shrine, he was ambushed by Zhao, who told him that the Fire Nation had been using traps like that one to trick airbenders all around the world. According to Zhao, only a few of the air nomads escaped the assault on the temples, but this was likely an under-exaggeration. It's more likely that most of the air nomads managed to escape the assault simply by not being at the temples, you know, because they were nomadic. 
And unlike most spin-off content of popular shows, almost all of the comics in The Lost Adventures were considered canon, which means the events that occurred in Relics were based on facts. This not only means that Aang was not the last living airbender, but it also opens the opportunity for characters like Tai Li to have been connected to the Air Nation lineage whether she knew it or not. And not only that, but beyond her flighty physical prowess, Tai Li's signature fighting style also seems to be connected to the Air Nation as well. The fact that Tai Li was a master at chi blocking made her a serious problem for Team Avatar to deal with. But on top of that, it made it much more likely that someone in her bloodline was from the Air Nation, since that's where chi blocking originated from in the first place. According to the Avatar lore, the art of chi blocking originated in the Air Nation and was first mastered by a nun named Roshan. She was one of the most skilled airbenders to have ever existed, and students constantly asked to be her apprentice. But according to the story, Roshan knew the dangers of chi blocking and feared teaching the technique to the wrong student. Chi blocking was an ancient technique that was used to block the flow of chi in the user's enemies, which made them unable to move their muscles, let alone use their bending powers. Chi blockers took poking to a level that Facebook could have only dreamed of. Therefore, Roshan decided that she would only agree to teach a student that she knew would only use the technique to help them adhere to the Air Nomad philosophy. Surprisingly enough, Roshan ended up finding a promising student in the Fire Nation, opening up the door for Tai Li or her ancestors to learn and connect to the Air Nation. One of Roshan's first students in the Fire Nation was the sister of Fire Lord Sozin. She became one of Roshan's most famous students, and since then, a very small group of people within the Fire Nation have mastered the art of chi blocking. And odds are, that means that they not only agreed with, but also upheld the philosophies of the Air Nation. This would include whoever taught Tai Li and the acrobat herself, further connecting Tai Li to her possible airbender roots. And believe it or not, airbenders and firebenders intermingling wasn't uncommon, especially during Avatar Roku's time. So Tai Li's family could have easily descended from a member of the Air Nation. Thanks to Avatar Legends, the tabletop role-playing game, we learned about the world during Avatar Roku's time period with a lot of the game's information revolving around the Air Nomads. According to the lore found in the game's manual and core book, the Air Nomads brought their teachings all around the world with them, including the Fire Nation. And many of the Fire Nation's politicians and wealthy families got involved in Air Nomad practices and even lived by their philosophies. The two nations even worked together and built the Fire and Air Center of Learning a school where airbenders could teach citizens of the Fire Nation that were interested in learning their ways. It was mostly the wealthy families of the Fire Nation that had the time to learn from the Air Nomads, which provided the grounds for Tai Li to be the descendant of an Air Nomad that settled down in the Fire Nation. Though it's never outright stated in Avatar The Last Airbender, fan theories on Reddit and other sources have often speculated that Tai Li came from a wealthy family. Otherwise, the odds of her being childhood friends with Princess Azula wouldn't have been likely. And perhaps Tai Li was unaware of her true ancestry, just like we were supposed to be. Tai Li grew up during a time when the majority of the world feared the Fire Nation, and we learned that most benders had to hide their powers so as not to paint a target on their backs. In the episode Imprisoned, we saw that benders in certain Fire Nation-controlled towns would hide their abilities so well that even their own families didn't know that they could bend. So it's safe to say that any of the Air Nomads that survived that Fire Nation attack, they would have been smart enough to do this too, especially any Nomads still working in the Fire Nation. And since Tai Li's family grew up within the boundaries of the Fire Nation, one of her relatives could have definitely been an Air Nomad or a descendant of one and was just keeping it quiet. Which would leave us with two options. Either Tai Li didn't know that she was a descendant of an Air Nomad and therefore all of her graceful movements were unintentionally aided by airbending, or Tai Li knew about her ancestry and was smart enough to know that she needed to hide it. This could also be the reason that she joined the circus. Not only did it give her distance from her six identical sisters, but it provided her with a space where she was able to use her bending without drawing too much attention to herself. And at the circus was where she mastered using her abilities while masking them with graceful movements so that others couldn't see her for what she really was, an airbender. What do you think about the idea of Tai Li being an airbender? Let us know in the comments below.